Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Roger Alford. Uh, I teach here at Pepperdine, and uh, I have the pleasure of being the director of the Diane and Guilford Glazer Institute for Jewish Studies. Um, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome all of you to Pepperdine University for the inaugural uh, conference of the Diane and Guilford Glazer Institute for Jewish Studies. Uh, if you've reviewed our website, you'll know that the goal of the Glazer Institute is to pursue reconciliation among the children of Abraham through understanding, dialogue, and engagement. Uh, the, this pursuit requires fidelity to one's own religious tradition while honoring the rich heritage and deep insights of other religious traditions. And we at Pepperdine hope to achieve these goals by hiring faculty, by funding unique <coughs> initiatives such as our program on faith-based diplomacy, by facilitating faculty and student travel to Israel and the larger Middle East, and by organizing small colloquia and special conferences such as this one. Uh, we've chosen for this first conference the topic of finding common ground, reconciliation among the children of Abraham. It is a topic that's generated a tremendous amount of enthusiasm, and your presence here reflects that enthusiasm. Please know that uh, this university strongly supports what we're doing. From the president, who has spoken often and enthusiastically about this event, to that first year <laughs> Jewish law student I spoke with last week, who did not know who I was, but went out of her way to come to my office to express her thrill that we were convening an event such as this. The idea of this conference is to stop for a moment and look at the larger mosaic of our faith community. In discussing the relationship between Jews, Christians, and Muslims, we all know the issues that divide us, divisions of history, theology, and politics, divisions <coughs> of violence, broken promises, prejudice, and insult. We do not for a moment wish to downplay those differences or pretend that they do not exist or do not matter. Indeed, I have organized conferences here at Pepperdine on the intersection between religion and the commission of genocide. But it is also clear that most of us are painfully unaware of the many things that unite us, issues of faith and hope, history and theology, shared visions, and common ethics. Religious pluralism is an issue we all know but often neglect. So today we want to pause for a moment and think about the possibility of reconciliation and understanding. And perhaps the best place to start to begin that thought process is to start from a perspective of each of our own families. Think about the issue of religious pluralism from the perspective of a family tree. This university, for example, is affiliated with the Churches of Christ, which originated as part of the Second <laughs> Great Awakening in the early 19th century. It is one denomination among many within the Protestant tradition, which emphasizes the centrality of scripture in the living out of the Christian faith. The Protestant tradition is one of three major branches of Christianity, alongside the Catholic and Orthodox traditions. Christianity has its roots in Judaism, and in fact began as a Jewish sect. Together with Judaism and Islam, it represents one of the three great monotheistic religions of the world. At every point along this family tree, there are fundamental departures. Each of you could do your own family tree that would distinguish your faith from others in this room. And we typically focus on these distinctions in organizing our lives. We divide individuals between us and them based on where they fall in this family tree. We choose to affiliate and support one congregation, one branch, and one faith tradition. Conversely, we neglect, ignore, and avoid those who do not share our particular religious understandings, even more so those who challenge or reject our faith perspective. <coughs> we find our place in the world th through this process of fragmentation. I am a human. I am a person of faith. I am a child of Abraham. I am a Christian. I am a Protestant. I am of this denomination. I am of this church. 
And yet, yet we know we are part of a larger family. We know that every person is made in the image of God. We know that every person is loved by God, regardless of their character, color, or creed. And we know that in a pluralistic society, we are constantly rubbing shoulders with those who do not share our faith. We live in one of the most religiously diverse communities in the world. The only cities in the world that have more Jews than Los Angeles are Tel Aviv, New York, Haifa, and Jerusalem. Southern California has the second largest concentration of Muslims in the country. There are thousands of residents of this city who are Buddhist, Hindu, Baha'i, and Sikh. So today we're going to focus on the similarities between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. We will not do so by offering a lukewarm porridge that dilutes the distinctives. We will not embrace a Unitarian Universalism that pursues a least common denominator at the expense of the richness and complexity that defines each of our beliefs. Now, it is right and good that we are engaging in such an enterprise at this school. Unlike many modern universities with religious roots, we do not apologize for our religious affiliation, and we find no inconsistency between a life of the mind and a life of faith. Our faith has deep roots and a broad canopy. We are serious about our Christian tradition, and that affords us the opportunity to be serious about the faith of others, to respect and honor other traditions in a spirit of civility and good faith. We approach these questions not as a matter of academic curiosity, but as a community that embraces faith in God as an organizing principle and as a worldview. So today, we are having something of a family reunion. I'm not being Pollyannish when I say that. I mean, let's be honest. Family reunions are awkward, <laughs> infrequent, and difficult. <laughs> they require us to get out of our comfort zone, to relearn names that we long for God, to recall relationships that are distant and neglected, and to apologize for our silence and our indifference. We arrive at a family reunion with trepidation, but we leave with a deeper sense of belonging. Hopefully, you will depart today with excitement, renewed hope, restored memories, and new understandings. Today, we invite you to ponder the idea of reconciliation among the children of Abraham. We are all children of God who seek to find common ground with friends, neighbors, and enemies. We are people of the book, so we will analyze how each of our traditions interprets those sacred texts. We will examine the perils and opportunities of closer interaction with one another. As a people of faith, we will reflect on the culture of disbelief that pervades much of our society and the faddish new atheism that boldly asserts that God is not great and that we are delusional to proclaim otherwise. And we will consider how religious pluralism intersects with national identity, how secular history is mixed with sacred history. Now let me conclude with just a brief word about diversity. In discussions such as this, it is always difficult to find the appropriate balance. Each faith has their divisions, and no person can fully reflect the range of views within a particular tradition. We have an amazing group of panelists and interlocutors and I have no doubt that they will enrich us deeply. But even still, we have struggled to be appropriately inclusive on matters such as gender and religious ideology. Please know that we recognize this struggle and that this is but one of many conferences that we have organized and will organize in pursuit of finding common ground. So in conclusion, we welcome each of you, each and every one of you, uh, let me now just make two very brief announcements and then turn the floor over to uh, Rebecca Goldberg. Um, cell phones, please uh, silence your cell phones or put them on vibrate. Uh, if you want to have lunch, you need a lunch ticket. Um, if you don't want to have lunch, you don't need a lunch ticket. Uh, restrooms are outside and to the building on your left and then turn left inside that building. So, Rebecca. Rebecca.